This video is continuing in our series about named distributions. Uh, the current distribution we're going to look at is named gamma. So I'll start this video by giving us a quick idea of the gamma distribution, what it's used for. Then we'll jump straight into R and plot the density function in R. I'm not going to write out the density function in its mathematical form just yet in this class because I'm a little concerned that if I did, it might scare half of you off. It's not, uh, it's not the simplest of equations you'll ever see in your life. So we'll just use a built-in function in R to help us make plots of the density function. Then we'll generate some fake data, as we've done for most of the distributions we've seen before. And then we'll do a real-world example of um, some actual data that people might care about and how, and we'll show how the gamma distribution um, plays a central part. So let's just do, whoops, give me a second. Let's just do the quick idea. The gamma distribution is used with data that measures time between events. And you get to choose the events of interest. And you get to um, choose the unit of time, whether that's like second, hours, days, light years, what have you. Um, okay, here we go. Let's give a quick example. The time until Google's next server fails. Now, that's not to suggest that all of Google is going to go down when their next server fails, but this is something Google is actively monitoring. How much time is it between the failure of two consecutive servers? Now, we can't predict pre uh, precisely when servers will fail. So as far as statistics is concerned, that is a random number. The time until the next server fails will show up at a random amount of time. OK, let's give this another go. Um, the time until this red light, OK, no, that's OK, yeah, let's keep it going. Red light turns green. Say you're stuck at a red traffic light, and you are trying desperately to get somewhere in your car. Not that you're trying to get anywhere in your car these days, but you can imagine the time until some traffic light turns green is some unknown time as far as you're concerned. And so the event is the traffic light turns green and you are waiting some amount of probably seconds, but I admit it feels like days, hours, whatever. Okay, let's give one more example. Um, I think there's a lot of civil engineers in the class, so we might give an example. Oh, I'm going to have to admit my lack of knowledge of anything civil engineering, so all of you will have to show up to class and tell me uh, what better examples I might have used. The time until um, the next sewer line breaks. That word is sewer. Let's see if we can. We don't know which sewer line is going to break, nor do we know when the next sewer line is going to break. So the time until the next sewer line breaks is a random value. And we might say the gamma distribution produced that amount of time until the next server line broke. Okay, so there's some three examples uh, to get us to get the gamma distribution motivated. Let's next look at uh, the density function in R. 
So the gamma distribution depends on these two parameters. We're just going to call them A and B, and I'm just going to give them some um, arbitrary values for now. We're going to use our friend, the function curve. And instead of writing out the density function ourselves, we're going to use the function d gamma, d for density and gamma for gamma distribution. There's our friend, the argument x. We'll plug in shape equals a. Now, anytime you see notation like this in a programming language, there is an argument to the function d gamma named shape and you're going to specify that it take on the value a. So they call this a named argument. Shape is the named argument. And rate is equal to b, which is the next named argument. We'll say the rate is equal to the value stored in b, 10. We're going to go from equals 0, 2 equals, we'll say 10, and n equals 301. There are some things to note immediately about this. Time can take on any real positive number or non-negative number. So the gamma distribution is our first distribution that is defined over non-negative real numbers. That is a set of uncountably infinite cardinality. It is an infinitely sized set for which we are defining this distribution. So you'll notice a line is drawn, and that is appropriate. I am not specifying points, because at any positive value, this density function uh, is defined. That includes crazy numbers like the square root of 2, or pi, or any other non-integer number you might define. This is our first distribution defined over an uncountably infinite set. That is the set of non-negative real numbers. So that's pretty exciting. The variables a and b don't have much meaning to us right now, but you can get an understanding for um, the sort of thing they do by just changing them around and looking at the new plot. Now, at some point, you will notice you can very easily find values from and to that will not adjust to where most of the density for your function shows up. So you might have to play around a little bit to kind of adjust your plot as you go, but I think that'll be a very good educational experience for you. We can also generate some fake data. We'll store into a variable named x random values taken from the gamma distribution. We'll generate capital N of them. That's our sample size. We'll keep the shape equal to A, as we specified before, and the rate equal to B, as we specified before. Now if you, whoops, sorry. Run that line, that line, that line, and let's add one more line. Density X, color equals orange. We can estimate that density using only the values in our sample stored in the vector named X. And we can make a plot of that. So you can see, using only the values stored in x, we get a fairly close representation of the true density function shown in black. The orange one is approximating the one in black using only the data we have. I encourage you to change the value of n and see how good of an approximation that orange curve is to the underlying black curve. I'll leave that for you all to do, and I'll wrap up this video by showing us a real-world example of the gamma distribution. So go into Google and type out R datasets. You should pull up the link that has uh, the URL with this dude's name, Vincent something Bundock, Vincent Arl Bundock? I don't know who this guy is, to be honest, but he has a really friendly website that is just data set after data set after data set. And I'm going to do Command F on my Mac. You'll do Control F if you're on a Windows machine and type out droughts. I'm going to use this data set droughts to show you a really good example of the gamma distribution in the real world. If you click on the um, link named doc, that'll pull up the documentation for this uh, data set. 
What we're interested in is the CSV file. So right click on that, copy the link address. Let's bring it back into R and we'll go like this. DS, that's a name I'm choosing. It could be any name, but it's gonna be helpful for us. We'll read the link of that CSV file by first putting in two double quotes and within the double quotes, I'm on a Mac, so I'm holding Command and then hitting V. If you're on a Windows machine, hold Control and then hit V to paste in that link in between the double quotes. Now we can plot what the density function of this data looks like. I will color it in orange so you know that it's an estimate using only the data that we have. Okay, so now let's do a quick explanation of what this density function that is approximating some assumed to be true gamma distribution, but we don't yet know that gamma distribution. This plot is approximating that using only the data stored in that data set we just downloaded from this guy Vincent's website. So this gamma distribution is representing the time in between rain events at the Winnipeg International Airport in Canada. Because we are measuring time in between rain events, we can assume a gamma distribution generated this data. Now the trick with the world of statistics is we don't know which gamma distribution, like we don't know the parameters A and B here, for this data set, which parameters generated these data, but it doesn't matter. We can, via the clever world of statistics, use only the data to estimate the gamma distribution that represents the time between rain events at the Winnipeg International Airport in Canada. So we can see I believe the data set is measured in days, but let's just go do a quick double check by clicking on the documentation. Uh, measured in days, indeed. So it looks like most rain events happen within one or two days because there is high density over the values one and two. It looks like most rain events happen within two days. Okay, so what this plot is telling you then is that it rains a lot in Winnipeg at the airport. Is that important information for us to know? Extremely. If you're a pilot or you're working at the airport uh, doing logistics for the planes coming in and out of the airport, you're going to need to know what sort of delays rain events might cause. If you're going to try to keep all of your... Um, customers happy, you're going to get all their planes in and out on time, and you're going to need to know what the weather is doing and how often that weather, those weather events are happening. You're going to need to know vital information like that. So hopefully this was a reasonable first look at the gamma distribution. We will have more looks at the gamma distribution in the future. Specifically, we will get back to what the density function looks like written out mathematically.